It's the untouchable True School Sports Empire, and this is the official fight night vlog for Virgil Ortiz versus Maurice Hooker, March 20th, 2021, Fort Worth, Texas. All right, so it's that special, special time again. It's it's fight night, you know. Um, Maurice Hooker versus Virgil Ortiz. Want to get my quick little thoughts on the fight and the whole card. First of all, Virgil Ortiz. Uh, Great prospect, you know, really is on the, is a really a contender, a young contender who could be stepping up if he looks good in this fight. He's fighting Maurice Hooker, who's coming up from 140, was champion at 140, now he's at 47, first fight at 47, got Terrence Crawford behind him. So it's an interesting fight. Virgil missed weight, so there's questions about, you know, how will, will, will him missing weight hurt him or help him on fight night? We'll see. Maurice Hooker, I interviewed him recently. He said he's coming to win, and, 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 he, and he really seemed to believe in himself, you know. So I'm excited for that fight, but really the, the, the real main event is 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 Sinisa Estrada. You know, if you if you watch this channel for any amount of time, you guys know that we are big fans of Sinisa Estrada on this channel. I'm a big fan of her life, her story, um, her skills, just everything about it, everything. And she's finally fighting for a world title um, against Annabelle Ortiz, who's held this belt at minimum weight for about like seven or eight years so she's not fighting some cupcake opponent she's fighting a good opponent a good solid rugged opponent who's won before so you know it's gonna be a, her moment of truth tonight and i'm looking forward to being there for that you got on the undercard george rincon tristan calcaru it's gonna be a momentous occasion out there in fort worth texas so uh it should be a great night look we talk about fight night drip right let's talk about, let, let's talk about this fight night drip so we got we got the red jeans the red jeans them joints is old navy so we got the red jeans from old navy I, i've worn these two i worn these jeans to a couple of fights and when we got this shirt right here you know what i'm saying let's, let's, let's flip it over let's make sure you guys get a good look at it get a good look boom that's what we support tonight the home the homie sneesa super bad estrada man you know a beauty and a beast in that ring um she gave me this shirt after her eighth fight against nancy franco in uh, 2016 on the Cuadras Chalatito undercard. Um, she actually, like, I asked her for a shirt, and after her fight, she was tired. She walked out the floor and went to her car, came back and gave it back to me. So this shirt holds a lot of value, a lot of sentimental value to me. And uh, you can't even get this shirt online anymore because it was only made around that particular time. Now she's got all the RBCA uh, shirts going on. You know, I got the hat, the untouchable hat. So that's, that's the fight night drip for you. All right, so you see the drip, I got the Sinisa Estrada shirt on, but I wanted to just give you guys my quick predictions for the fight before we go. We'll see how it ages later on. In the main event, I got Virgil Ortiz, um, eighth round stoppage victory. And in the co-main event between Sinisa Estrada and Amber Ortiz, give me Sinisa Estrada in the seventh round. I, I think she gets a stoppage in the middle rounds, you know, against Amber Ortiz. The speed, the power, that's the difference for Virgil. The difference is gonna be the physical strength and the, and the poise and the patience. So, yeah, those are my predictions. On the way to the fight. Look who showed up, my man, James, coach time. What's good, man? What up with you? I'm, I'm good. We, we, we just got here. So let me tell him what this is going to be tonight. It's going to be Virgil Ortiz. I'll say in the fourth round. Yeah. But I'll give Maurice maybe five. Five? And I say four because I feel like it's only going to take Virgil two rounds to find his range, three rounds to hurt him, four rounds to pack him up like a school lunch. There you have it, man. James, Damn, crunch time. Crush time. <laughs> so yeah, we're here, man. We, we just arrived at the arena. Um, we're going to be a great night of boxing. Uh, we just got the announcement for Canelo and Saunders here, which I'm excited about. Yeah. But I didn't mean Canelo's going to win. Canelo's the best. He's the best in the world right now, man. So it's not even close. You think so? I think he is, bro. I mean, like, at the end of the day, like, what got me, I know Kovalev was old or whatever, but, like, the fact that he's knocking out dudes like that and not and stopping them, I mean, that's amazing, bro. Like, Canelo, he's one of a kind, man. Like, I, I don't, like, from just a history standpoint, what he's about to do, he's, I, he might as well just go to light heavyweight officially and just make it a, a wrestler. I don't know who he can fight at middleweight. Like, you want Benavidez? 
I'll tell you the fight I want. It's not gonna happen, but I, I want I want to fight Demetrius Andre. It's not gonna happen. Yeah, not gonna yeah, happen. Yeah, 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 that ain't gonna happen. At least you know it's not gonna happen. No, nah, no, it's not gonna happen. But like I said, man, boxing's in a great space. I'm mean, I'm excited for this kid Virgil, man. Like I said, you no know, coming out of Grand Prairie, the things that he's doing in boxing at such a young age. We got a phenom that we ain't able to be here at home and watch. So man, I'm excited for tonight, man. But I do I, I, my prediction is I do think Virgil's gonna win. Um, I don't want to say he's gonna stop him. Yeah. But I, I think he's gonna win. Okay, well, hopefully we get, we, hopefully we get a, a great fight, man. Yeah, hopefully we do, man, because I don't, man, I, I don't know these last couple of fights I've been to, like, bad stuff that happened, so hopefully not tonight, man. My juju is not bad tonight. Okay, well, before we uh, uh, end the video, uh, tell people about your channel and where they can find you. Oh, man, yeah, man, my name is Chris Henderson. I go by C-E-N-D-O, and that's S-E-E-H-E-N-D-O. You can search me on YouTube. I cover the NBA, Major League Baseball, boxing, and I do entertainment as well. I talk sneakers, gaming. Um, if you're into sneakers and gaming and music, you definitely want to. He's your guy. Out. He's your guy. You definitely got to check us out, man. Um, we got some things coming up. I am dropping a video with Bernard Hawkins pretty shortly, so it's going to oh, be wow. dope. Yeah, me and Big things, man. Yeah, man. Me and B-Hawk got to sit down with each other. But, man, once again, y'all, follow my man, man, because this dude, he walks around with a camera, his phone, and he does this. And it's amazing. I watched him at Frisco when the when the Vargas and um, Mikey Garcia fight yeah, yeah. was going on. This man was vlogging, man. And the next thing you know, it's people that I know. Was hitting me up was like, man, I just saw you on this video on YouTube, and I had to go to the video. It's my guy, man. So y'all be sure to support my guy, man. Right. Anything that he has going, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment on this guy stuff. All right, Chris Henderson, a, a gentleman as always. Thank you, Chris. Hey, brother, you be All safe, man. Tonight wearing blue with white and gold, he officially scaled it at 121.6 pounds. This evening, he enters this contest perfect. 13 bouts, 13 victories, with eight wins coming by way of knockout and no defeat. Introducing to you the fighting pride of Dallas, Texas, the undefeated Hector Hedraviesso. So Hector Valdez gets the unanimous decision over Torres. Really good fight. Um, Hector Valdez controlled the majority of the rounds, pressuring him, throwing a lot of hooks, combinations, uh, straight right hands. Uh, really did a good job closing the gap. There was one part in the middle of the fight for about two rounds where Torres was turning him and Hector made a great adjustment to kind of take the half step back and then throw the left hook to the body. So, uh, And then from there on, he controlled the fight and it was this fight. Did, didn't get the stoppage, but the rounds are going to serve him good later on. Uh, as he progresses, so uh, yeah, go go with us out the card. Look, we got the ring car girls, but they ain't in the fucking ring. We live in the last days. <laughs> what do you think, Moses? I think, yeah, they're on the way out, man. That's it, man. Yeah, we done. Uh, Hey Felipe, what do you think about these ring car girls uh, not being in the, out of the ring? The floor girls? <laughs> the, the, the floor girls, yeah. The floor girls? Yeah. AI is taking over, bro. Who? AI. Artificial intelligence taking over. Look at this shit. <laughs> Of super lightweight action, we now go to the judges' scorecards. Here are the totals. Judges Robert Chapa and Judge Chris Migliori have the bout 80 to 71, and Judge David Yakabuchi scores the bout 79, 72. For your winner by unanimous decision, he is still undefeated. The party ride on Carlton, Texas. All right, so George Rincon uh, gets another win, still undefeated as a professional. He boxed really, really well. He, he showed a lot of patience, poise, and ability to pick his counter shots. He's definitely one to watch for the future. I mean, I was talking to my boy Ramon, who came to fight to me, and he was telling me that George was quite the amateur. So 
You know, he's one to watch out for. Uh, definitely one of the better talented prospects in the Golden Boy stable. And yeah, the, the Knights moving along nice. Hector Valdez had a good performance. Uh, aggressively, George had a good performance as far as patience. Both still undefeated, so we await our next fight. And there they are again for the second straight week. The worst commentary team in boxing. Chris Maddox, Sergio Mora. Right there. They're closer this time. So that was the performance of the night. Uh, we just had Alex Martin. He defeated, uh, what's the guy's name? Hernandez? Luis Hernandez. Luis Hernandez. He just beat Luis Hernandez. And it was a straight masterclass. We saw him moving and slipping, parrying shots, counter punching really well. It was really one of the best, one of the best fights I've seen in person, uh, defensive performances I've seen in person in a long time. So good win for him. That's a guy that's been through a lot in his career. Um, he had some tough losses early on to Miguel Cruz. Um, the first fight I thought he won, I was there in Miami when they fought. Um, lost to Brian Perella, so this means a lot for him. Good, good for him, and hopefully he can continue to push up the ranks with that win. How about you, Felipe? What do you think? Alex Martin is a man, bro. Alex Martin, man. He's a man. Yeah, man. So yeah, now we're just getting closer and closer and closer to uh, the real main event. Lisa Estrada versus Anibal Ortiz. Off of this man, so Chester Kalkaruth is a problem if you guys didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet tea. What do you think, Moses? I, I knew that was coming, but not like that in that fashion. Yeah, yeah, but I knew it right away. You've been knowing Chester for a long time, yeah, yeah in his amateur days. Uh, way before when, when Ruben used to call him Sweet tea. Now he's grown up, man. He's going into a nice, fine young man, man. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Seems to have a bright future in the sport. Very bright. Yeah, yeah. Very bright. Yeah, right now, 
right now, they're getting, they're getting the stretch ready for this man. All right, so Tristan Kalkaru gets it done in a round. There's not really much to dissect. Um, Dustin Long was a journeyman. Like right now, they're carting him off on a stretcher. That's some sad shit. But um, Dustin Long was a journeyman. He uh, pinnacle of his career was when he knocked out Marcellus Wilder. He fought Tristan Kalkaru, and Kalkaru just didn't. We, we didn't waste no time. He unloaded on him and shot to the top, shot to the body. And um, when he saw the opening, he took him in. You know, just another fine performance from a, from a, a young rising prospect. So. Shout out to him and best wishes on his career. And we got Jamal Herring and James Wilkins with the WBO 130 pound title. Some nice Texas barbecue. That's what he wants to go to. This man think he's slick, he's playing hot, red hot to the girl. Oh, 
Thumbs up. Come on, Super Bad. 31 and 4. the Let's go. Come on, Salisa.
live. So Maurice Zucker and Virgil Ortiz. Right now, Virgil's uh, starting to separate himself. Virgil just scored a knockdown. Maurice starting to snap with his punches. And um, he's in a matter of survival mode right now. But he did a good job to survive those last 15 seconds. He threw some punches and just staying like, what, what, what do you think, Moses? Hey, when he's getting hurt like that, he needs to hold. Yeah. And not let, not let Ortiz just take the momentum like that. He needs to hold. Absolutely, man. Felipe, what do you think? There you have it. You had to get knocked the fuck out. But I I'm still going for Mo. Hopefully Mo can, uh, can, can withstand this onslaught. Jesus, man. Virgil Ortiz, a damn surgeon in there.
you heard it from Ramon, he said you could beat Terrence Crawford, but not Earl Spence. Yeah, it was, it was a good effort from um, Maurice. He did what he could. He was slapping too much with his punches. You know, Virgil's fundamentals, his jab, his precision, it's just... He broke his hand. Oh, bro, apparently he broke his hand. He broke his hand. Yeah. Broke his hand. He broke his damn hand. He broke his hand. Okay. He broke his hand. But yeah, like I, I, I thought Virgil was gonna stop Maurice around the seventh or eighth. So it went about the way I expected it. Being on top of the hill. Did he break you when he hit the body? No, he hit on top of the hill. Oh, it was it shoulder knock? 